Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Aaron Myers, and on behalf of the John G. Riley Center and Museum, I want to welcome you to our grave decorating service. This is our opening and only in-person event for this year's 20th of May celebrations. The remainder of our programs will be online at uh, www.20thofmay.com. But we want to uh, welcome you all and thank you all for being here in our audience. Uh, we want to thank um, those who are participating on the program this morning, the U.S. Color Troops, um, local clergy, um, public officials. We've got students and staff from, uh, uh, we have Bethel Christian Academy and the Kingdom Life Preparatory Academy here with us. We're so um, grateful to see you here in your, in your faces, even with the masks on. So we're, again, grateful that you all are here with us. We're so grateful for Ms. Altamese Barnes, who spoke a little bit earlier. It is indeed a very beautiful morning. We are grateful for her continued guidance and support um, of us that are still here at uh, the Riley Center and Museum. Uh, she asked me if I could sing, and I told her uh, not in public. She is coming to lead us in a hymn and will provide for us the occasion for this morning's service. If you would just join me in that as we start the reenactment ceremony. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see through many, through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. T'was grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me on. For the occasion, I decided to share the following excerpts from the weekly Floridian, which was the forerunner to the Tallahassee Democrat. May 18, 1875, weekly Floridian celebration of emancipation. Residents celebrated Emancipation Day with their annual visit to the cemetery to decorate the graves of soldiers. In the evening, the Benevolent Society entertained friends with a supper at the Freedmen's Building. May 18, 1880, Weekly Floridian. Sunday schools are arranging to decorate graves of Union soldiers on May 20th. Meet at Lincoln Academy for the address by Elder James Smith, March to the Cemetery, and the Committee of Arrangements, Everett Jones, Edward Yellowhair, B.D. O'Neill, and John Riley, Sunday School Superintendent. Weekly Feridian, May 20th, 1873, Emancipation Celebration. On May 20th, colored residents observed Emancipation Day. They visited the graves of Union soldiers and gathered at the Capitol, where John Wallace, John Stokes, Charles Pierce, William Stewart, and Jonathan Gibbs gave speeches. So, today we gather to remember with reverence and reenact this historical event in recognition of Emancipation Day in Florida, May 20th, 1865. That is the occasion. I want to thank uh, Ms. Barnes, Dr. Myers, uh, the John G. Riley Museum for its continuing leadership, uh, it illuminating uh, reflections that we might look back in time to appreciate the significance of this day, the sacrifices of lives of those who are laying in this yard, and to note that God, through it all, has encouraged some to go to the forefront, to fight in the trenches, 
for that precious thing called freedom. Before we do this prayer, we want to note that this year is the first ever of which the Leon County government is closed. And the employees of Leon County's government are paid with a holiday. And I think that that's significant in particular in the aftermath of what our nation experienced on last year with um, the loss of the life of George Floyd. And I'm grateful that for the years of struggle, contributions, and through it all, that our government in the county uh, has recognized this as a significant day worthy of uh, celebrating. So we pray to an almighty God, and God, we thank you for the lives of those persons who lie here in a cemetery in Leon County, Florida. But these are not the only soldiers who've died and sacrificed and stood for freedom. And after 246 years of slavery, they thought it not robbery to put their own lives on the line in the quest for freedom. And so, Lord, we thank you. What our country is evolving into, but we know that you're not finished with us yet. But it takes the courage of soldiers like these who we honor and decorate today to stand against a mighty stubborn opponent, a mighty hardcore opponent. And then, God, when we would have passed this moment of reflection and commemoration, might we walk out of this cemetery a little taller in our convictions to be about our father's business of freeing the captive, of bringing sight to the blind, and of doing those things which the Luke 4 pericope suggests that we ought be about as Christian soldiers. Yes, we're soldiers in the army, and help us, O oh Lord, to merit mm, your praise of saying, well done, thou good and faithful Christian soldier, for being faithful over a few things in fighting in some wars and doing your part for justice in America. This is our prayer, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Dr. Myers and Mrs. Barnes for organizing this event and Commissioner Proctor for that powerful word of prayer. I'll ask you now to join me in a litany of remembrance. You'll find this printed in the center of your program. I'll read the parts that say leader, you read the parts that say all, and we'll join our voices together for the last of the lines. Recognizing that on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation ending slavery, but it was not until May 20th, 1865, that the word reached Florida and the border states that were still in rebellion. We gather on this day to remember the Union soldiers that are buried here and to recognize their fight for freedom. We honor, we honor and give thanks dedication. for their dedication to secure their freedom and that of others who were being held in bondage. For their sacrifices, struggles, and determination to persevere despite the obstacles, we gather to remember. We acknowledge the role that the Union soldiers played in battle and at the official reading of the Emancipation Proclamation by General Edward Hill in Florida on May 20, 1865. We return each year, as our forefathers did, as a way of knitting the generations to history and its meaning. May we the leaders and our ancestors to and and May our children be led here each year 
to decorate these graves, honoring the lives and the principles for which these soldiers fought. Amen. We will now have students from Bethel Christian Academy come for our soldiers' poem. Cut. Alert, soldiers! They have slept and marched and suffered neath the same dark skies as you. They have met as fierce and foemen and have been as brave and true. And their deeds shall find a record in the registry of fame. For their blood has cleaned completely every blot of slavery shame. So to all honor and all glory for the, to those noble sons of Ham. The gallant colored soldiers who fought for Uncle Sam. Colored soldiers. Colored soldiers. Good morning, a dedication. I'm Sergeant Major Jarvis Rozier, retired U.S. Army, President and Founder of the 2nd Infantry Regiment, United States Fellow Troop, Living History Association. Our mission is to preserve, protect, promote, educate, and interpret the accomplishments of the many African-American soldiers and civilians that you see that helped bring in and rein in the tyranny of slavery and oppression of people of color. We're an actual living history unit. We like to say knowing what history is to know it, but to see it in living history form where you see the soldiers, we look like those soldiers we're commemorating today. Um, our ladies are generally, they're dressed in what is called mourning dresses. They came out to the cemeteries and they looked at and they viewed their loved ones. So we're here to commemorate them. It was once said, give a black man the blast, get brass letters across his chest, give him eagles on his buttons a musket on his shoulder and a bullet in his pocket and there's nothing that can deny he has gained citizenship to these United States. Frederick Douglass, a great orator and a great abolitionist pushing the African Americans to fight. So when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, African Americans were able to bear arms and were able to join the Union Army. But many African Americans said they didn't, want to, they didn't think they joined because it's a white man's war. But on one occasion, Frederick Douglass said, to arms fight, said from east to west and from north to south, the sky is written all over, said liberty now or never, said liberty won by the white man would lose half his luster. He who will be free shall strike the blow. He said better to die free than to live a slave. Said this is the sentiment of, of, of Mark in Charleston, of Nat Turner of Southampton, of Shields, Green and Copeland who fell and died as glorious martyrs with John Brown. He said that remember, in a contest of oppression, the Almighty has no, con uh, has no attributes for the oppressor. Many of these African Americans, that soldiers that we are representing today, we're representing the 2nd Infantry Regiment, USCT. Many of those soldiers lie here today, and we commemorate them. Many of those soldiers died. Many of those soldiers left their homes not like their white brethren did. They left for the God-given right to have a home free of tyranny and slavery. Many of them left knowing that they may never come home, but what they're doing in their fight will get a better life and maybe freedom for their families. So many of them left. Many of us saw maybe the movie Glory where they huddled around before they went to war and they said a prayer. There was a prayer that was coined. And many times when I speak, I use it to bring people in, because there's a, you have to have a passion, a passion for why we're here. We're celebrating emancipation. Emancipation was celebrated a few blocks of here on the Knot House on May 20th, 1865. At that time, 62,000 African Americans were free from the bondage of slavery. And when I speak to young folks, they kind of, you know how it is, they kind of itchy and not move around, but they, you have to put them in that position, young and old. And there was a prayer, one that was coined. It was called the Soldier's Prayer. It said, make me live so that when I die, I might have manners. And I shall know what to say when I meet my heavenly Lord. He said, let me live with the musket in one hand and the Bible in the other. So that if I should die at the musket, down the water, down the land, I shall know that I had my blessed Jesus in my hand. And I had no fear. 
that I left my wife and little children in the land of bondage. I hear my little ones cry every night, where, where is my father? But when I die and the blessed morning rises, my feet shall stand in thy glory. Bid one foot in the water and bid one foot on the land. And then, O oh Lord, I shall see my wife and little children once again. A prayer of truth, a prayer of passion, a prayer that was real, and we see the realness of it, those that gave and those that gave all. We'll be doing a salute to these soldiers, and we, we are prepared to salute them each and every year from henceforth and forevermore, and we all should celebrate their sacrifices. Thank you. We will now have our students from Kingdom Life Preparatory Academy come forward to prepare for the Declaration of Graves. And students from Bethel Christian Academy as well. Thank you. such uh, a meaningful uh, alignment of the living whose appreciation for the sacrifices of those who've given not just partially but given their all for the cause of freedom and these carnations which we hold today they are red and red symbolizes the color of the blood of the slain, of the triumphant spirits of those at whose tombstones we stand behind today. So it is once more that on this Emancipation Day of May 20th that we honor, we celebrate, and we commemorate the heroic stance of those men and persons who have given their all and cast their lives in the fight for freedom. So in unison on the count of three, we shall bend and we shall lend our and lay our flowers across the graves. One, two, and three, let us bend down together and lay our tokens of appreciation and respect upon these tombstones. Gracious God, we thank you for all, again, of what the lives and the meaning of these lives have represented. We thank you, O oh Lord, and might the spirit we capture and continue to carry forth the flame and the torch for freedom, equality, and justice for all. Our prayer, again, amen. 